Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. In this episode, Illuminar 2018 Tips and Tricks, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on sharpening and noise reduction. Specifically, we're going to work with the denoise filter and the sharpening filter in Luminar. And the first tip I could offer is try to do noise reduction as soon as possible in your workflow. What you'll find is if you add some filters to your image, filters that increase contrast and clarity and structure and microstructure, that those functions of those filters will tend to enhance the noise, make the noise more noticeable, and make it more pernicious, more difficult to remove. So try to remove noise as early as possible in your workflow. And the second tip I could offer is try to sharpen your image as late as possible in your workflow. What you'll find again with many filters, those filters that have uh, clarity and contrast and structure and microstructure, that a lot of that functionality will sharpen your image. And if you sharpen early, then add other filters that have those functions, you'll tend to over sharpen your image and you want to avoid that. So what you want to do is save sharpening towards the end and what you'll often find is you don't have to use it at all. Your image will be sharp enough with all the other filters you happen to use. So for this demonstration, we're going to work with this image. Now I chose this image for two reasons. First of all, it's an animal. It's not a wild animal. It's a zoo animal, but it's still an animal. And we tend to like our wildlife slash zoo photos to be as sharp as possible. The second reason I chose this shot is there is a lot of noise. You may not notice it right now, but when you do sharpening and noise reduction, another tip is you should zoom in. Zoom in to a part of the image that has a lot of noise where you want to reduce that noise. And then when later when you sharpen, zoom into a part of the image that you want to make sure is very sharp. So I'm gonna zoom in and it's recommended that you zoom in around 100% and that usually will be fine. For this demonstration and for this video, so I make sure that you could see it in the video, I'm gonna actually zoom in to 200%. And if we look at the background behind the cat, you'll notice there's a lot of noise. And there's actually two different types of noise here. That's another reason why I chose this image. It has luminance noise, and all luminance noise is just like noise that looks like film grain. And that's very common and almost every image will have it, especially if you're shooting at higher ISOs and especially if in the darker parts of your image. So where the uh, shadows are in your image, that's where the noise tends to be. Also, the second type of noise we have here is color noise. And you may notice that there's these little colorful dots and usually the dots will be red, green and or blue. And that's called color noise. And again, it's relatively common and it's easy to rid with the, the denoise filter. So I'm going to stay zoomed in here and I'm going to go to add filters and I'm going to add that denoise filter. And I'm going to close down the filters catalog so it's out of our way. Now the denoise filter is pretty simple. There's only three sliders and we have two sliders that cover those two different types of noise I was talking about. Luminosity noise and color noise. And really all you need to do is move the slider to the right. And as I move the luminosity slider to the right, you could see that that noise is starting to smooth out. Similarly, we could still see that color there. You could see those little color splotches. If I take this color slider and move it to the right, you could see how it kind of rids it of that color as well. So we could move these sliders to the right and totally rid the image of any noise whatsoever. The boost slider will help give it like a little more or a little less. And the reason why that boost slider is there is we're often fighting a battle when we're doing noise reduction. We want to get rid of the noise, but when you get rid of the noise, you tend to soften the sharpness. So you don't want to get, you just don't want to come in here and move luminosity and color to 100 and move boost up to 100 as well. Yeah, we got rid of the noise, but where we want the image to be sharp isn't as sharp as it should be. So again, you want to do it just enough. So zoom in, again, I'll zoom into 200. Um, what I tend to like to do, now if I was zoomed in at 100, this would be more applicable. I like to look at something I want sharp, 
and something where there's a lot of noise all in one screen. Then what I'll do, and I'll reset this filter, is I'll move the sliders so I'm getting rid of the noise, but I also then look at the detail, like the detail in the cat's eye here. Now there is a little noise in there as well, but as I move it to the right, you can see how it's starting to blur out the eye. We don't want that, but we want to get rid of that noise. So I will move it just enough so that it smoothed the noise out. I may not uh, be able to eliminate it 100% before I start blurring out detail to a point that it's not acceptable. So I will do that. Then I'll go back. Now I had some color noise that was mainly up in here. And I am going to zoom up a little more. And I'll take the color slider and move that to the right to get rid of that color noise. And I'm going to keep color noise very high here. Again, a lot of times you'll get some micro contrast with color, in, which is a good thing. And if you're moving the color slider all the way to 100 all the time, you'll tend to lose that micro contrast. There isn't a lot of micro contrast in this image. It um, doesn't have a lot of varying color, uh, but it's mostly like earth tones. And so that color slider, I could get away with pushing that up a little higher. But we'll zoom in again. And then I could go to the boost and see if I could maybe get away with pulling it down a little bit and see if it still got rid of the noise, which it has. And it's not adversely affecting anything else. So that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to bring boost up. Right around 26 is good. And that seems to be pretty good. So I'll zoom back in to 200%. You can still see there's a little noise there. And I'll turn the filter off. There's before and there's after. Before, after. But that's pretty good. I mean, when we're zoomed out one to one, or zoomed out to 35% here, you could see that, you know, you don't know the noise is still a tiny bit there. It looks good. So I think that looks pretty good. So. If we wanted to add more filters now, like I'd add more filters now, but for the sake of this demonstration, let's just jump right into the sharpening slider. And the sharpening slider, again, you would, or the sharpening filter, I'm sorry, you should do again towards the end of your workflow. So we'll go to Add Filters, and we'll go to Sharpening. And I'll close down that Filters catalog again. And you can see that this isn't very complicated either. We have the Amount slider, and then we have Radius Masking and Dehalo. And Again, I would zoom in, and you want to zoom in on something that you want sharp. Like, I want this cat's eye sharp. But I'll also keep in mind somewhere where there was noise, because we don't want to enhance the noise again. So I would start bringing a mount up, and I could see that it's sharpening the cat's eyes. Hopefully it's coming through in the video. But you could see how it sharpened the eyes. Now, radius... When you're sharpening, what you're ever really doing is you're adding edge contrast. So wherever something is light and dark next to each other. So you have this edge, and it transitions from something lighter to something darker, or vice versa. That's a, a high contrast edge. And when you sharpen something, what you're actually doing is you're taking that high contrast edge, and you're increasing that contrast just on that edge. And it may be only a pixel or two on either side of that edge. So when you're doing that, you're making the part that's lighter a little bit lighter and the part that's darker a little bit darker. And that's how you're increasing the contrast. And that makes it look like the image is sharper. The radius is how far out from that edge are you going to affect with the amount slider. So if we're doing, if let's say radius is at 50, maybe we're just doing two pixels on either side of that transition line where the light touches the dark. As I move radius to the right, we'll start increasing it from two pixels on either side, maybe to four to five to six pixels. So we're increasing that edge. And you can see how it increases the sharpness, too, as I move it to the right. But this, when you're messing with radius, this really does affect the uh, noise as well. So you'll tend to enhance noise. Now hopefully you did the noise early in your workflow and it won't be a factor. But 
It also tends to make it look over sharpened. You can see that the cat's fur just looks horrible. So we really have to back that off so it looks more realistic. Now what masking does is where there's a big swath of uniform tone and color, a lot of times we don't need that sharp. And what happens again is if you apply sharpening, you tend to enhance the noise. So landscape photographers love the masking slider because you have this uniform blue sky and it very readily will show the noise. And if you sharpen, you'll tend to enhance the noise in the sky and make it look noisier than it actually is. What you would do then is take this masking slider and move it to the right, and it will remove the sharpening from those areas that have uniform contrast and uniform color. So the areas around this cat where it's kind of more uniform, if I move masking to the right, it will remove any sharpening that was applied there. And you could zoom in again and just see. And we did such a good job with the denoise filter that we're not enhancing any existing noise with the sharpening filter. So masking isn't as effective right now, but that's a good thing. We don't really have to use it. But again, just move it to the right to start masking out those areas with uniform contrast and color. If you find, though, that if you move it too far to the right, it's going to start affecting areas that aren't quite uniform contrast in color and might start making those areas less sharp. So then move it to the left. D-Halo, there's not an example in this image, but what you'll find often is when you apply filters to an image and you have, let's say, uh, a high contrast area. An example would be a bright blue sky with a dark telephone pole going up through the sky or a dark tree trunk going up through the sky. And what uh, you'll often find is the dark tree trunk or dark telephone pole will look like it's starting to smudge off into that sky. That's haloing. And that is very common when you apply a lot of contrast, clarity, structure, microstructure, and sharpening to an image. If you find that, take this dehalo slider and move it to the right. What you could do also is if it just things don't look sharp enough and you're not really having an issue with haloing, you could take the dehalo slider and move it to the left and it actually will sharpen your image a touch more, very little. But you could experiment with that with that dehalo slider. So what I would do, and I'm going to reset this, is I'm happy with my denoise. I'll zoom in to the cat's eye because I want that sharp. I'll move a mount up quite a bit so I could see the sharpening on the cat's eye. Hopefully you could see it in the video. Um, hopefully you're watching the video in HD. Uh, there's a little gear in the lower right-hand corner of the video. If you click on that, you could see the resolution of the video, different resolutions. Click on the highest one. Hopefully you'll be able to stream the higher resolution, but it will look clearer and you'll more readily see the noise and the sharpness that I'm doing. And then I'm going to push radius up a touch. You can see it's working well. It didn't adversely affect the cat's fur. And then I'll take masking to the right a little bit, even though it's really not needed in here, and I'm going to leave D-Halo alone. So in my opinion, this is a properly noise-reduced and sharpened image. So if I turn both of those filters off and I'll zoom in and I'll go back to 200, we could see this noise here. I'll turn the denoise um, filter on and once it kicks in you could see image processing over in the lower left hand corner. You could see it smoothed out the noise very well. And if I drag over to our cat's eyes and then I'll turn this filter off. You can see how there's a lot of noise in the cat's eye. And if I turn it back on, you can see how it reduced the noise, but it did blur it a little bit. So I'll go to sharpening and turn that on. And once it's done processing that, you can see it increased the sharpening, but it did bring back some of that noise. So I could come in here and move with radius a little bit or move with masking and see if I could help it, but I don't think it's necessary. I think once you're zoomed out, 
nor looking at the image normally, it looks fine. So that's some tips on using the denoise filter to remove or reduce noise in your image, both luminance and color noise, and the sharpening filter to just sharpen your image. The main thing I want you to remember is do denoise early in your workflow and do sharpening late in your workflow. And I think you'll find that it will more effectively work out for you in the long run. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.